By default, Word Online comes with the simplified ribbon. You can expand simplified ribbon and you will see familiar ribbon that you used to using traditional desktop based Microsoft Word. Let's do a quick overview of Microsoft Word user interface. Right now we are in the Home tab, but we can navigate to File tab, or we can navigate to the Insert tab, Layout, References, Review, View, and Help tabs. Most of the important commands located in the Home tab, and 80% of the time you will spend working on the Home tab. Icons on the tab are organized into groups. For example, you have a clipboard group that have cut, copy, and paste commands, as well as the format painter command. You have font group, you have a paragraph group, you have styles group, editing, dictation, and editor. Each tab on the ribbon has its own set of groups. Just like in the regular Word document, you can just go ahead and start typing your text. Once you have entered your text, you can change the formatting of the text. For example, you can apply different styles, like heading one style. To do that, you just need to select the section for which you're trying to apply the style and click on the Style button. You can also change font. You can change font appearance, for example, make it bold, italic, or underlined, or combination of bold, italic, and underlined. And you can access any command for the selected text on the ribbon itself or by doing right mouse click and you have access to commands that might be applicable to your selection. You have full access to clipboard commands. For example, you can select the text, click copy, and then paste the same text in a different area of the document. To make cut, copy, and paste work from the ribbon, you need to install Office copy and paste extensions. I'm going to choose install. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka, and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. Most of my career, I worked as a consultant helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in a community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. And once installation is complete, I can just click the Paste button and it will work in a similar way. Access to keyboard shortcuts Ctrl-X, Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V is available without doing any additional installations. To access to the header of the document, you need to navigate to upper right corner of the page and click on the header. In the header you can type the date and the name of your document. To finish working on the header, you need to click on any area outside of the header. To access the footer, you need to click at the bottom right corner of the document. In the footer, you typically might want to insert the page number, the date, or any other information that you need. To insert page number, you need to navigate to Insert tab and select Page Number, and select the location for the page number. And it will insert the number of the page right in the area where you want it. To stop working on the footer of the document, you need to click on any area outside of the footer. To insert the table, you need to navigate to Insert tab, select Insert Table, and select the area for the table that you're trying to insert. Then you need to navigate to the specific cell and just start typing. Once you have inserted all the values into the table and selected the table, you see that there are two new ribbon tabs that showed up table design and table layout. These are table specific functions that are only available when you have tables selected. For example, in table design, you can select different styles for your table. And you can switch between the styles without affecting the content of the table itself. In table layout tab, you have select functions, table delete functions, table insert, merge and align functions. You can also insert images in Microsoft Word Online. To insert the image, you need to put the cursor where you would like image to be inserted, click on the Insert tab, and if you click Picture, it will let you download picture from your computer, or if you click Online Pictures, you will be able to search and find picture on the search engine. For example, we can picture of the airplane, 
and insert it right into the Word Online document. When picture is inserted and selected, you have access to picture ribbon. On the picture ribbon, you can enter all text, you can pick different picture styles, you can rotate the image, crop it, and change image size as necessary. As we added more information into the document, you see that the document became a two-page document, and some information shifted on the page two. You can control when page two starts by inserting a page break. To insert a page break, you need to navigate to Insert tab and select Page Break. And that inserts page break, and this is where the second page starts. By using page break, you have full control of where one page ends and another page starts. To give document a name, you need to click on the document title in the upper part of the screen. By default, Word Online saves all of your documents onto OneDrive. You do not need to specifically click the Save button or Save Menu item to save your document. All changes are saved automatically. But you can save document as by choosing Save As option and choosing different formats and different options available. To print your document, you need to click File and then Print. And it will bring up the Print dialog box from your browser. From here, you have different options of how you would like to print your document. You can print it into PDF, or you can choose one of the available printers to print it. You can also share your document with other people or embed this document into your blog post or website. And if you choose Save As option, you can download a copy of the document right onto your desktop and continue editing on the desktop version of Microsoft Word. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to Online Training for Everyone. State-of-the-art skills Tips, tricks, and techniques we share with you here on Online Training for Everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. There are a lot of cool things you can do to the Word document to make it look professional. For example, a lot of times you just start with the text document and you have to understand the document structure. In my case, my son asked me a few questions and wrote an essay based on this information for his school project. But in your case, it might be a consulting project that you're submitting for the client or something else where you would like to present it in the most professional and most elegant way. Let's assume that you're done with writing the document and now all you need to do is format it to make it more presentable and look more professional. The first step is to understand the document structure. Microsoft Word provides with the statistics for the document. If you click on the bottom left corner, you see how many words you have in your document, how many paragraphs, and obviously you see how many pages you have. I'm using Microsoft Word Online because it provides the best capabilities to edit the document with another person. But you might be using desktop version, which is pretty much the same and has a lot more capabilities. The first step in the process is to give document a name, at least draft name if you don't know what the final name might be. To do that, you click on the document title and type in your name. Word Online saves the document automatically, so you do not need to click the Save button. Once you give file the title, you can also consider giving the title to the entire document. To do that, you may need to add a new line and paste the title. Word provides exceptional capabilities to highlighting what the title is. There are different styles in Word, and for regular text, the style is typically normal, versus for the heading, the style is typically heading. And once you assign heading style to the title, it provides a lot of different advantages. One cool feature I like about Microsoft Word is that it shows special symbols. For example, if you want to see all end-of-the-line symbols in all the spaces and some other special characters that are typically not visible, you just click the Show Hide button on the Home toolbar. Microsoft Word allows you control the line spacing in the document with high level of precision. Line spacing is one of the paragraph level controls and is represented with the button which shows the specific line spacing options available. To change the line spacing, you need to select the text for which you're trying to change the line spacing and then choose the line spacing option. For example, by default, it uses line spacing one, but if you need to change it for two, maybe for APA paper or some other documents. You can easily do it in Microsoft Word. To undo it, you just need to use Undo button on the Home ribbon. Sometimes you may need to do line spacing less than one. So how do you do it? 
This is not one of the options available here. And to do it, you click on the line spacing options dialog box. Make sure that the line spacing drop down box shows multiple and then put the value less than one in the add box. You need to reduce the value down to one and then put the value 0.9 and click OK. And you see that it reduced line spacing and made it less than one. This level of precision is especially useful if you're trying to fit the document into the certain number of pages. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure that you get it in the future. A lot of times you may need to add header, footer and page numbers into your Microsoft Word document. To add headers into the document, you navigate to Insert ribbon and select Header and Footer, which enables header and footer sections at the top and at the bottom of the document respectively. To add the text to the header of the document, you just start typing the text. Same is true for the footer of the document, but the footer is a little different because it's broken down into three separate sections. For example, you might consider adding the text in the right part of the footer and to insert the page number, you navigate back to the ribbon and say that you would like to insert the page number and you can choose from six different locations left, middle or right in the top of the document or left, middle or right at the bottom of the document because we already have a lot of spaces filled up in the different parts of the document the logical place for the page numbers might be at the left bottom of the document once you insert it Word puts in the special formula which will be translated into the page number when you're done working with headers and footers you need to exit the header and footer mode to do that, you just need to click on the text in the document. By default, Microsoft Word Online doesn't show header and footer information. To view them, you need to switch to a different mode. One of the modes that displays the header and footer information is the Reading View mode. When you switch into the Reading View mode, you see header information on the top and footer information, which consists of the page number and some other information we put into the footer. To switch back to the editing mode, you click on the Edit Document in the upper right corner. To enhance presentability of the document, you might consider adding pictures or using Bing Online Search or Google Search and insert pictures into the document. In my case, I'm trying to make professional presentation of the essay my son wrote after interviewing me about my childhood. I do not have any relevant pictures that I can insert, so I decided to do a search and take advantage of the word features. To do that, you need to click on the Insert button and select Online Pictures. And I will choose Bing as the default engine. So I type in the keywords Children in Soviet Union and see what comes up. Because the story my son wrote is about friendship, I changed the query to Boys Playing in USSR. And now I'm looking for relevant picture. There are a couple good ones, and I would like to pick the one that most reminds me of my childhood. Once you have the picture inserted, you can move the picture inside the Word document. Or as much easier strategy you might find, you can just cut the picture and paste it in the right place in the document where you think it's the most applicable. To do that, you navigate to the place in the document, put your cursor in, and use copy and paste features of Microsoft Word to insert the picture. Microsoft Word provides multiple different ways to edit the picture after you insert it into the document. To edit the picture, you can apply styles. You select the picture and right mouse click on the picture to access to styles, grow, shrink and crop menus. Styles menu provides you with the most sophisticated set of options. If you click on styles, you can change your picture and adjust it to make it look more based on the style that you're trying to accomplish. Second row in the style menu represent traditional styles versus bottom row represents more modern, three-dimensional looks that you might assign to your picture. To change the size of the picture, you can either use grow or shrink options, or you can change the size of the pictures by dragging the corners. To achieve precision, an exact size that you're trying to get. Crop option in the menu allows you to remove parts of the picture that you don't think are relevant. Once you hit enter, the new updated picture will show up in the document. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. Sometimes to achieve professional look in Microsoft Word document, you might require high level of precision of where text and image are located. For example, as I am editing my son's essay and inserted the picture, 
I would like to make sure that the text flows around the picture or maybe on the right side or on the left side of the picture. One of the ways to accomplish this is to use hidden table. To add table into the document, you need to have an empty row in the table and then use insert and then use table. And we typically just need three by one table. And once you select it, you click insert. Next step would be to drag the image right into the table or you can cut and paste image into the table. You can then play with the image sizes and resize the image as necessary. And also you can play with the sizes of the table cells. If there is some specific text that's relevant to the picture, you might consider cutting this text and then pasting it into the table. There might be two paragraphs that might be relevant to the picture. So you can do this by cutting two paragraphs and pasting them into the third cell. And then the last step would be to select the table and make sure that the borders in that table are not visible. To do that, we need to go to Table Design and Table Layout tabs. If you click on Table Design, you access the different border styles for the table. And one of the styles would be No Borders. Once you select No Border Style, the borders of the table disappear. And the text smoothly flows around the picture. Hidden Table will not show up in the main editing mode and it will also not show up in the reading view mode as well. As well as it will also be hidden when you try to print this document. When we were just starting our mission, we wanted to pick the name that would best describe our values. And this is the main reason why we picked howtoanalyzedata.net because the core of our mission is covering questions how and why in every video that we make. Make sure you consider this when you're making your own decision whether to subscribe to the channel or not. Because online training for everyone is one of the few channels that provides you with the real answers. Sometimes you may need to reduce number of pages in the Word document because you try and fit the certain size for printing. For example, I'm working on my son's essay and school required him to create a document no more than four pages. Currently, the essay is five pages long. You can see it by hovering the number of pages available in the bottom left corner. You can also see it if you navigate to the view and then switch to the reading view in the Word Online. You see that there are five pages in this document. And if you want to go to the last page, you just navigate to the page five. So how can you reduce the size of this document to four pages? One of the ways to fit the content of the document into a certain number of pages is to change the margins in the document. To do that, you need to go to the Layout tab and look at the current indentation margins and, if necessary, change them. For example, by default, value of indentation is zero, which is an equivalent of about one inch on both sides. To change it, you would have to select all text if you would like it to be applicable to all text. Or you can select certain paragraphs and apply indentation to just your selection. For example, if you would like to reduce indentation on the left, the value can go down to the negative, and you can do the same thing to the right indentation of the paragraph. Typically, to make document look professional, you don't apply it to just one paragraph, but you apply it to the entire document. To apply it to the entire document, you need to select the entire document, which you can use with Control a shortcut on the keyboard, which selects everything on the page. And then you can apply and put specific value in the left indentation, or you can use the drop-down selection, maybe use 0.4, you can also apply the same value to the right indentation. As you can see, we're almost down to four pages. And you can play and experiment until you get down to the correct value. Another way to make sure that the document fits into a certain number of pages is to reduce spacing. For example, the before spacing right now is 20 points. You can reduce it down maybe to six points, and it will certainly reduce the size the document needed to fit into the number of pages. And last but not least way of reducing the size of the document to make sure it fits into the certain number of pages is by reducing the font. If we select the entire content, go back to the Home tab, by default, Normal Style comes with certain size font. If we can reduce it by one point, it will help us fit the document into smaller number of pages. As you can see, now document fits into four pages. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people 
by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.